What is up, J-Bays? Welcome back to the channel where everything is chaotic and we don't know what's going on. All right, so Amanda Seals, let's talk about it. You guys probably know her best as Tiffany from Insecure. Um, if you're an older millennial auntie like myself, she was one half of Flowetry for a while. She was went by Amanda Diva on MTV2 for quite a long time. She created the game show Smart, Funny, and Black, which is fantastic. If you ever get a chance to go see it live, highly suggest do so. It's a great black time. She's been in the entertainment industry for probably at least 20 years. However, I think now she's mostly known to the masses as an online personality or creator or whatever you want to call it. Um, she has over 2 million followers on Instagram alone. She does a lot of pro-black work, I guess you could call it. She does a lot of advocating for black folks, especially black women. And she tends to not come off great to a lot of people. And that's where this discourse seems to be coming from is she's been painted as somebody who's not quote unquote likable. She's known for being very direct to the point, not really beating around the bush. Um, somebody that I guess would be called like an angry black woman just because she speaks her mind. A lot of things that I identify with because I am also the same way, like babes, the world could be ending tomorrow. I don't have time to hold your hands and have fifis about things that y'all should have learned 300 years ago. We don't have time for that. But the reason I'm talking about this now is because there's been quite a bit of discourse online, specifically on Instagram, because within the last week, maybe two weeks, three major news publications have published articles about her defaming her character. Um, the Griot, The Root, and Essence all have posted three completely separate, three different author authors have made entire think pieces about her character. And so as these have been coming out, Amanda has been kind of respond to the, responding to them and challenging them as like, why am I the person that you guys are targeting about this? And why am I even topic of conversation? And then today she posted um, a video because the, f the most recent one came out, which was on the griot. And she was basically like, yo, this is the last straw. Like, what is y'all's problem with me? Okay, honestly, I've had enough. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? Really? Three pieces. Three. From three people I have never met in my life. From three publications that are supposed to be about uplifting black people, which is all I have dedicated my life to doing. Shit! What hubris do I have? You people literally cannot stand that someone has studied and is speaking on what they study, that someone has read and is speaking on what they read. You can't stand that someone loves us, that someone loves us so much that their passion is so exemplary and is exuding through the phone that it touches people who literally have never felt love that much and they don't know how to process it. That's what you're feeling. I want to send all the love to everyone who has shown me love. But you people who are continuing to attempt to break me down, you will not break me. You cannot break me. I am loved. I am anointed. I am touched. I am working through the blood of our ancestors. You will not break me. And it is so sad that you are so broken that this is the effort that you would take to try and get some clout. And you know what? Let's say I did get broken. Y'all will be the first ones to be like, see, y'all be doing too much. No, big up to all my strong black women who are supporting other strong black women and every other person supporting us. We love you. The rest of y'all can suck up. And so I went and I read all three articles so that you don't have to and we don't have to give this any more clicks. And so I just wanted to give my thoughts about this whole situation. So first and foremost, I guess that these articles, or at least the first article that was put out, was in response to Amanda Seals um, posting a V on Instagram saying that she doesn't feel like she's supported by black media. Now, not too long ago, Lenny Kravitz said this same thing. And so this these series of articles that have come out within the last week seem to be a response to her talking about not feeling supported by black media in particular, which I think from what I have gathered um, has stemmed from her being denied entry into a black Hollywood party during the Emmys or maybe it was the Oscars. Um, and she was saying that it had something to do with Issa Rae's publicist. I guess they've had beef for quite a while. Um, it's been rumored that there's been beef between her and the rest of the Insecure cast because we never see her with the rest of the cast when they're doing events and stuff. So um, there might be some underlying issues there and I guess she has made claims that she was denied entry um, 
into whatever Black Hollywood party or Black Hollywood space is. Another thing that was brought up was the fact that Jonathan Majors, who's quite literally a convicted abuser, was invited to the NAACP awards and she was not. So I read all three articles and they're basically all saying the same thing. They basically are all alluding to you're not supported by Black media because you're an unlikable person. Like this first piece from Essence is literally titled, it's time to admit that being liked is more important than being good at your job. And this author goes through and talks about how her work isn't being perceived well or is going to be passed over because she doesn't deliver it in a likable way. And it's also weird because this article also goes through and mentions how um, she was on The Breakfast Club, I believe, in like 2018, 2019, where she alleged um, that she was sexually harassed or assaulted by a very famous person. She didn't name the person, but I guess social media um, did their thing and found out who it was and then was mad at her for the way that she said that she was targeted by this person. And I'm just like, why does that matter? If somebody is alleging assault, why the hell does it matter? the way that they say that they were assaulted or harassed or what will it be? Why is that the thing that y'all are focused on? It's little things like that that really make me kind of lean more to her side that y'all are just coming up with reasons to hate her because she's an outspoken black woman. Now, I will say I don't personally follow Amanda Seals that closely. I do follow her on Instagram, but I don't really keep up with what she's doing all the time. And she has said and done some stuff that kind of makes me do a little side eye, but she's never done anything completely wild to my knowledge. But I am also somebody who doesn't believe that we all need to agree on everything in order to get to the same goal. The second article that came out was from The Root, which is also a very large black publication that um, is titled if everyone says the same thing about Amanda Seals, could she be the problem? And basically talks about the same thing that the first article does is basically like if if this many people are saying they don't like you and they don't like your delivery, etc, etc, at what point are you the problem and not everybody else? But it's like she has 2.2 million followers. So very clearly the people who do like her very heavily outweigh the people who don't like her. So where is this logic? And I'm not saying she's perfect. I don't know her. I don't know what she does on and off. I don't know what she does off there. She could be rude or she could be not likable to people, but people are allowed to not be likable. Like everybody don't need to be your friend. And then the final piece that came out just a day ago, um, titled Amanda Seals is nothing but a victim of her own hubris, um, was kind of the last straw, I think, for her, which in which she posted this video kind of going on a rant about why there have been three different publications posting stories about her character. And again, I read it so that you don't have to. This author basically is saying the same thing as the other two are doing. Um, the only difference is really this author in particular is like, I understand being like a loud, unpalatable black woman, etc, etc. But like, we should still work on our delivery and still like, basically saying we should give into respectability politics, which is kind of the point that Amanda Seals is trying to make. So that's kind of the background of what has started this whole discourse. So my thoughts on this um, as I wrap up here. My biggest question is why is this what we are talking about? Because I did a search on all of these platforms. There's nothing critiquing like Diddy. <laughs> the fact that Diddy's entire empire is coming crashing to the fucking ground because every single day more stuff about him being a disgusting predator is coming out. Y'all aren't reporting on that. Y'all are worried about Amanda Seals. It's an election year. There are so many things going on. People cannot afford rent. Groceries too high. Trump is still trying to run for president. There are black girls missing. There is wars going on. Please be for fucking real. Why is this what y'all focus? Why are three of the biggest online news sources for black people worried about Amanda Seals and nothing else? This is what you guys have decided to put your focus on. That is what I would like answered. Put all that aside. I don't really care <laughs> whether or not you like Amanda Seals or whether she's palatable or respectability politics or all that shit. Why are you as a major news publication? Why are y'all why is this what you also focused on? This is bottom of the barrel tier stuff. This is not a conversation. Like what is, what, what are y'all trying to get out of this conversation? What do these op-ed pieces, what are they, what, what conversation are they starting? What are we supposed to do with this, this information? Okay, you don't like Amanda Seals. Great. Now what? So that's the first thing that I would like to know. The second thing is y'all really need to get off your respectability politics high horse. Like people don't need to 
approach issues the way that you want them to approach it in order to be valid or respected people don't need you don't need to like people to respect people right i don't have to agree with every black activist to respect what they're doing as a black activist unless they're like a candace owens let people do what they do and let them approach how they approach right everyone's gonna have they're going to cater to a different sector of the black community or just the community at large right mlk and malcolm x did not agree on how to approach the civil rights movement, but they both were valid in the ways that they chose to do so. And they both had a huge following of people who agreed with them. One isn't better than the other. They're just different approaches. But for some reason, when black women decide to be very upfront, we're considered very loud and aggressive and angry, but when men do with their leaders and they're confident and they're precise and yes, but when women do it, especially black women, for some reason, then we all of a sudden are angry and unlikable and oh my gosh, girl, tone it down so that people can actually watch you and like you and he, 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 you need to be this likable person. No, they don't. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody owes you likability. And it's interesting to me because I mentioned earlier Lenny Kravitz and Lenny Kravitz said this same thing, I think it was maybe December of last year, where he said that he feels blackballed by black media. And none of these publications went as hard on him as they are doing for Amanda Seals, which is so interesting because there's actually a reason to drag Lenny Kravitz because so many black publicists came forward and were like, no, actually you specifically said, I don't want to talk to black media or I don't want to work with black media. So this is a man that has gone out of his way to not be involved in the black community and yet y'all didn't be y'all weren't posting this many think pieces on when he said he wasn't accepted for black media but when a black woman says the same thing but doesn't have any of the record to back up y'all hate her so much y'all post three different think pieces within a week it's weird where are the think pieces about the aid workers that were just unalived over in gaza why, why are you guys focusing on this why is this what you have chosen to write your op-ed pieces on and for y'all as black publications to publish them but anyways that's all that's my thoughts i just want to jump in here and give my thoughts on this situation because i frankly find it very weird this pile on that's been happening with amanda seals whether you like her or not it's weird whether you like her or not doesn't really matter somebody doesn't need to be likable in order to be respected as a person as a human being please give a like and subscribe if you have not done so you can find me on all social medias at hey Rebecca J. I also have launched a Patreon. I'm going to be moving a lot of my adoption content over to Patreon specifically um, and keep this more of a commentary channel. So if you want more in-depth conversations about um, adoption and the adoption industry, it's going to be over on Patreon at Rebecca J. As always, I'll put the links to everything down in the description. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching and love you. Bye.